Now, if you explore the Node.js server structure, you're going to find that the portal defines your easy tables in a pre-configured folder named tables. So here on the screen, you can see we're at the site slash www root folder using an FTP client. Now, if you have a bunch of tables that you want to create, it can be really tedious to do each one in the portal. So another option is to define them all by adding the files into the server folders. The next time an HTTP request hits the server, Node will notice that the changed files exist and create or edit your table definitions. Now, this adds a little bit of processing time to the request, so the first request will be a little bit slower than normal. The tables folder contains the files which define your easy table endpoints in JavaScript and JSON. If you defined a table through the portal, you're going to find a pair of files for each defined table here. You can also create tables by creating the appropriate files in the tables folder of the Node.js configuration. The Node.js backend is going to create the new SQL table for any .js file that you add to the tables folder, assuming the appropriate supporting files are present. So for example, if you create a file named event.js, you're going to get a SQL table named event. If you create a file named contact.js, you'll get a SQL table called contact. If you've already defined an easy table, you have an even easier way to edit the scripts. Just open the specific easy table blade, which shows you all the rows in the table, and then click the edit script toolbar button. This is going to open a new Visual Studio Online editor pop-up. The entire site contents are going to be displayed and editable with the Visual Studio Online editor. You can even add or download or upload files here too. No matter how you edit the files, the two files used to describe a single easy table are a JSON description file and a JavaScript table controller file. The purpose of the file is to store the extra metadata about the table that we defined in the portal. You know, permissions primarily, as you can see here. This information is not stored in the SQL Server database and is inserted uh, here instead. The second file is actually the more important one. This is the table script, which is actually loaded by Azure. Sometimes this is called the table controller. It's essentially the endpoint logic for the database requests over the wire. This script is a customization point. The created table variable has various properties and actions that can be configured to manage the server-side handling of the table. You can add pre and post logic for each operation on the database. You can override access levels specified in the JSON file to enforce requirements and ensure that the portal can't override them. For example, here we're ensuring that you cannot update records. All records must be new in this case. If you're creating a new easy table, you can also add your custom columns into the table controller script. All the required columns are added by Azure automatically. You only define the custom schema. We set the columns property to a JSON object. Make sure to stick with the allowed data types, string, number, boolean, and date. Then turn off dynamic schema so that this becomes the static definition of the table. The SQL Server backing store table will be created the first time this is accessed. If the column definition is changed after the table exists, it will update the underlying database on the next service request. New columns are added automatically. Removed columns are left along and still returned in the data set. Just like the portal, you can't change the column type after creation with this mechanism. The Node.js model turns this feature on by default. There used to be a checkbox in the portal for soft delete, but that's been removed as of right now. If you decide that you don't want soft deletes, you can turn it off by editing the JSON table definition file. The easiest way to do this is to click the edit script button in the toolbar for your easy table, and this will open up the server in Visual Studio Online. You can then edit the JSON file and change the soft delete flag to false. And up to this point, we've been assuming that our data is initially empty and it's going to be populated by the client. But what if we wanted to initially seed our database with some data? The ASP.NET backend has a method to do this as part of the code first database creation, appropriately called seed database. But this option is not available for the Node.js side. However, there are two solutions that we can take. The first is the portal, and the portal includes an add from CSV option, which allows you to both define an easy table schema as well as fill it with data from a supplied comma separated file. This approach only works if you use a Node.js server backend. The second method is to create a seed initializer method, and this approach is specific to the ASP.NET server backend. And finally, remember, we're storing our data in a SQL server no matter which backend we're using, so an approach that works with either model is to connect to the SQL server and populate it directly with a SQL Management Studio tool or some other import process. And this approach is particularly useful if you have a lot of data to put into your database. The add from CSV option is present in the toolbar for an easy table API. Just select that in your app's properties, and you're going to find that button. 
The process is really simple. You supply a file with a comma separated values from your local machine. It gets uploaded and the blade lets you select the column data types and then you upload the data, which creates the database table and fills it with your data. The data file is just a standard comma separated value file. The first row should have the column names in case you want them to be added. The other line should have the data for each column, as you see here. The only tricky thing here is that currently the file must have a terminating CRLF on the last line, which makes it look like there's an empty line in the file. Without this, the last line of the file is not going to be imported into your database. It's possible that this is a bug in the current implementation. This feature is still currently labeled as preview, but just keep that in mind as you import your data. When you're using the ASP.NET backend, you can take advantage of NAD Frameworks mechanisms to see data. The template creates this code for you, but it has to be modified to add the specific data that you're going to need. This is just standard NAD Framework code. If you've used NAD Framework in the past, you can use the same techniques here. The code is placed in the app start folder of your project in a source file called startup.mobile. That file contains a class which is used to initialize each of your tables. In particular, the seed method could be used to populate tables with data by pre-filling the database context for the table. The last option is to connect to the SQL database and populate it directly with data. The main thing that you need here is the connection string. This is found on the dashboard for the database that you've defined. We've highlighted it here. With the connection string in hand, you're almost ready to connect, but there is one more step. By default, SQL databases in Azure are private. You have to add rules to the firewall to access it through an external API. This is done through the More menu on the SQL Server dashboard for the database. Select Set Server Firewall option to open the configuration blade. You can then add each IP address or a range that you'd like to allow through the firewall. You must enter the changes one at a time though and click Save. Multiple changes will probably result in an error. This can take maybe up to five minutes to reconfigure the firewall, although in my experience it's pretty fast. Now you can open the SQL Server Management Studio from your allowed IP address and connect to the server using the connection string information. This is primarily the server URL, the username, and the password. And once there, you can add columns, you can alter the metadata, and you can insert or manipulate the rows.